Today I have a very special video for you, no matter if you're a veteran Destiny player or brand new to the game. I'll be ranking every single playstyle seen in the Crucible into a tier list. Well, at least the most annoying ones. Honestly, I don't even know what this video really is. Is it just a tier list? Or a state of the game video? Maybe even a tutorial on how to win in Trials, all in one. If you're thinking about giving Destiny 2 a try, this will give you a great impression of what you're going to have to face in the Crucible, and if you're already playing Destiny, you'll certainly recognize many of these playstyles. So sit back and enjoy as I rant, I mean rank, every annoying, cringy, and busted playstyle in Destiny 2 PvP on a tier list from F tier to S tier, and perhaps even beyond. Let's start this tier list out with a very slow playstyle. If you're a veteran player, you probably already know where I'm going with this one. For newer players, let me just mention that most of the fighting that happens in Destiny 2 occurs in very close ranges. We're talking shotguns, shatter dive, and bad connections. These tend to dominate in the close ranges. However, these crafty scout rifle mains have developed a playstyle that aims to avoid all of that mess by never actually participating in a close range gunfight. Set up in the corner of a map, preferably close to your team's spawn point, equip your scout rifle of choice and take some pot shots at everyone that you can see. Since you're going to be upwards of 60 meters away from your opponents, there's pretty much little risk that you'll get shot back. While this is an incredibly safe playstyle, often it would be much smarter to actually just help your teammates, even if they don't necessarily return the favor. In vanilla Destiny 2, this was pretty much the meta due to the slower time to kill and lack of special weapons, but in today's game it's really not all that effective, which is why I'm going to rank this playstyle in the F tier. Now taking an extreme turn in the range department, we're going to talk about a different kind of player. Ah yes, shotgun apes. Players afflicted with this ape lifestyle are living proof that Destiny 2 is, well, a pretty easy game. Equip shotgun, press W, and click. This is basically all you need to do to win a duel. You can see them coming from a mile away and somehow they still get you. Well, most of the time anyways. Shotgun aping is one of the most effective and easy tactics to pick up. This is partially due to the fact that your aim with a shotgun can be very loose and still grant you a one-shot kill if you're in close proximity to your enemy. It's also quite a challenge to defend against shotgun rushing if you aren't prepared. If you're caught off guard, a good shotgun push will send you all the way back to the respawn screen. However, the one-dimensional nature of shotgun rushing makes it very predictable and easy to outplay when you know that someone's aping towards you. I want to make myself very clear in this case. The shotgun ape playstyle doesn't simply refer to equipping a shotgun. Most of the top players when using a shotgun will actually have their primary weapon out most of the time, and they'll only pull out their shotgun defensively when the moment is right. Shotgun rushing works best against newer players, but it loses its effectiveness quickly as you ascend the skill ladder. I would advise against keeping your shotgun out at all times, especially after the recent shotgun nerfs. Use your primary more if you want to progress out of the D tier. Next up is a playstyle for those of us who want to get a little bit more Call of Duty action in our destiny. You might be able to see where I'm going with this one. Why spend hundreds of hours practicing your aim to land headshots when you can get the job done with a single body shot? Jokes aside, this playstyle might seem like a cover up for poor aim skill, but at the end of the day, the winner of the match is mostly determined by who lands more kills. And if your kills don't even require headshots, you're probably going to come out on top. Additionally, there are many angles in the game which won't expose your enemy's head, but you can still land a body shot. Smarter enemies will run enough resilience on their build to stop this tactic cold, but most players out there will be easy cannon fodder and make for a nice montage. And if you have kill clip on your sniper, you can run around dropping anyone in sight regardless of their resilience level. This playstyle is a bit restrictive since you need to get a damage buff to make it work, but once you get it going, the stopping power can make it extremely dominant. A tier. This is the ultimate no you playstyle of Destiny 2. I'm talking about the middle tree reflect everything version of the hunter Arkstrider. Golden gunshots? No you. Firing hammers? No you. Stasis tornado warnings? No you. My tornado now. Thanks to the Raiju's harness exotic chest piece, you can have this ability ready with incredible uptime and reflect basically anything that your opponents have to throw your way. You can even earn some bonus points if you slot the Charge with Light mods along with the Raiju's Harness to feed your teammates a damage boost every time you pop your super. This is an incredibly difficult playstyle to go against, especially if the entire enemy team is reaping the benefits of the damage boost. Although it's incredibly satisfying to reflect a Stasis Tornado back at the caster, I'll have to rank this tactic in the C tier because our next playstyle beams right through the Spinning Staff. 
So I heard that you might want to win some easy games in Trials. Well, watch and listen closely, this is lesson number one. Write this one down, take some notes, and I'll wait. These players aren't going anywhere either. Two hours later. And that's the win. You might think I was joking, but the sad reality is that what I've shown you has been the most reliable way to win in Destiny 2 for a long time now. Not inhuman speeds, not godlike accuracy, not incredible game sense. Just blast the enemy with a beam of energy that decimates basically any other super, hits enemies around corners, and until Season 15 could even be recharged by simply running in place thanks to the Geomag stabilizers. If you've ever played even just a couple matches of Trials of Osiris, I'm sure that you faced at least one Chaos Reach Farmer team. I don't think there's really much else to say about this playstyle. S tier for winning games, F tier for making new friends. Hopefully the changes coming in Season 15 to Geomags let us drop this down a tier or two. After getting beamed just one too many times, a natural question that comes to mind is, how can I too be incredibly annoying to my opponents? Well outside of a straight copycat, this playstyle is one that will damage your opponents both physically in the game and probably psychologically in the real world. I'm talking about grenade launchers, especially when they're being spammed. Grenades can bounce off walls and thanks to their incredibly generous AoE, they can deliver massive or even lethal damage around corners. This makes it very difficult for your enemies to play defensively since they have to account for damage even behind cover. Though I do believe there are more tactical ways to deploy a grenade launcher besides just simple spam. Skilled players will predict your shots and cause you to waste some ammo. As much as I think spamming grenade launchers is overpowered in the current state, and I do kind of hate them, I have to admit this playstyle is very strong right now. Arguably the best special weapon in the game at the moment. So fine, I'll give it to him, B tier. While grenade launchers are certainly annoying, they're at least limited by the ammo economy. If you miss twice, you're typically out of ammo. But then there's this playstyle. The Heart of Inmost Light allows you to empower your sticky grenades to get one-shot kills, sometimes even collateral kills. Destiny 2 is basically an ability spam simulator these days and having a grenade which can arc around cover with highly magnetic aim assist and deliver a consistent one-shot kill is just insanely strong to say the least. In endgame PvP modes like Trials, just getting the first kill is often enough to be the deciding factor for who wins the round. If you get proficient with the sticky nades, you can also land an airstrike across the map for some really cheeky kills. This playstyle can be very dominant, especially since you don't even need to have a direct line of sight. I'm going to rank it in the B tier. Continuing with the idea of annoying our opponents, how do you make getting tagged by a bow from 100 meters away even more frustrating? Followed up with an instantaneous hand cannon shot, of course. This combination of pairing a bow and a hand cannon together mitigates the number one problem of using a bow, which is the lengthy delay between shots. But what if you want to kill that target instantly? Ain't nobody got time for drawing the bow back for another shot. These clever players will use some method of speeding up the swap to their hand cannon so they can deal the killing blow even faster than you can blink an eye. Some players will do this with armor mods or weapon perks like quick draw, while others will utilize the so-called quick draw glitch where you can straight up cancel the animation usually required to switch weapons. You'll see many of these hot swappers using Le Monarch as their bow to deal poison damage so even if they miss their hand cannon shot, you'll be slowly burning to death. The main downside of this build is that you don't really have much to show for close range weapons, but if you're good enough with the bow and the hand cannon swap, you can make it work at basically any range. It's certainly an elite combo for 1v1 fights. Overall, I'll rank it in the C tier, but I could see an argument for going higher in the hands of a really adept player. For the longest time, Destiny 2 used to be a shotgun ape festival. In the past, people would... Wait a second, there's a mistake in the script. Destiny 2 still is a shotgun ape fest even today. But I guess shotguns did get a big nerf recently. This allows for submachine guns to rise up in effectiveness since they were mostly endangered by shotguns. Simultaneously, the Multimach and the Shayera's Wrath were recently added to the game, both SMGs with the potential to duel at hand cannon ranges. Finally, the Titan exotic boosts called Peacekeepers provide a whole deal of benefits while you're wielding an SMG. Auto-loading holster, a million handling, lightning fast strafe speed, and so on. This playstyle is extremely devastating when used by top players, and it requires a very well-coordinated team to consistently outplay. 
A while ago, SMGs were considered to be off-meta, but now they're among the best weapons, and that's why this playstyle lands in the A tier. This playstyle is the master of montages and a lot of fun. Unless, of course, you're on the wrong side of the Golden Gun. These MLG Pro wannabe hunters run wild in the Crucible, and they've been a menace ever since the first days of Destiny 1. Typically wearing stompies, these gunslinging hunters tend to fly high in the sky hunting prey for their next 7th column. Need a teammate to help you cap a zone? This guy probably doesn't have your back. He's aiming exclusively for max kills per second to pop that next sweet sweet golden gun. You'll typically see these kinds of players topping the leaderboards with kills and snorting G-Fuel to get every edge that they possibly can. And hey, I feel like I can make fun of these guys because I've spent more time on Golden Gun going for kills than pretty much any other subclass since the first days of Vanilla Destiny. If you're going for max kills in quick play modes, this will get you pretty far if you're a good shot with the Golden Gun. But if you're looking for a more reliable teammate to help get you out of a jam, you're probably better off looking elsewhere. C tier. Many high level players have compared Destiny to the game of chess. Thanks to excessive aim assist and very strong abilities, the real challenge in Destiny 2 often simply isn't having good mechanical aim, but rather being smart about how you make your plays. Well, if we compare this playstyle to chess, it's like you're playing against a blindfolded opponent and giving them wrong callouts with your moves on the board. Radar and visual cues are the biggest sources of information in Destiny 2, but this playstyle allows you to trick your opponents on both fronts at the same time, giving your opponents a lot of false information. By going invisible, you can temporarily take yourself off of the radar, and by throwing trap smoke grenades, you can make the enemies think that you're somewhere else. As the cherry on top of the pancake, you can use the exotic sidearm Rat King to give yourself health and even more invisibility after a kill and reload. Together with the trick smokes, the invis dodge, and exotics like Graviton Forfeit or the 6 Coyote, you can have some incredible uptime on your invisibility. Basically, you're only going to be exposed while you're shooting at your enemy. If you combine this with a good team, this playstyle can be absolutely devastating. And it can also cover for your teammates weaknesses since you can get free shots off on your enemies while they're distracted. We're going to put this playstyle in the B tier. After experiencing the pain of Destiny 2 connections one too many times, you might feel a bit frustrated. You might even feel the need to get revenge on your opponents. Maybe you want to cheat. But what if I told you that you could cheat in Destiny 2 without spending a penny and without any threat of getting your account banned? Equip Kepri's Sting, 100 Strength, the Gambler's Dodge, and enjoy laughing in the face of cheaters who had to spend their whole month's income just to get the same effect. You can thank me later, or just say thanks right now by subbing to the channel. Kepri Sting is basically the closest thing you're going to get to a third party cheat in the entire game. When used by a skilled player, Kepri's can help you make some smart decisions that will allow you to brutally outplay your opponents. Thanks to the Gambler's Dodge, Outreach, and 100 Strength, you can have your smoke ready for basically every single engagement. And if you pair it with Middle Tree Night Stalker and crouch just as you land the headshot, you can string together your wall hacks as long as you keep landing those kills. I'll rank this form of cheating with wall hacks only in the A tier, which probably says a lot about the state of the game right now. Unfortunately in Destiny 2, the cheating we have to play against often isn't limited to just the Kepri Sting. Well, since Bungie's anti-cheat has been in development for seemingly the last century, they've given us a mock-up of our very own anti-cheat. These exotic gauntlets allow you to shoot through your own barricade while also blocking incoming shots. This will allow you some free damage on an aimbot cheater without any risk of getting shot back in return. Skilled players have many options to outplay the side ramparts like fast movement, bastion, or just a simple glacier grenade. But against an opponent lacking awareness, this tactic will get you some of the easiest and safest kills in the game. Even though these gloves can theoretically beat cheaters, I'm going to rank them in the B tier since actually good players won't have many problems with these shields. Destiny has a very wide universe and diverse PvP experience. A surprising iteration of PvP recently is the D2 variant of the children's game, The Floor is Lava. This playstyle is all about a single exotic grenade launcher, the Wither Horde. This grenade launcher spits out pools of Taken Blight. Basically, wherever the Blight is, you shouldn't go or you'll quickly be burned to death. This playstyle is actually quite effective when there's a stationary objective to be grabbed, or on maps with very close quarters and low ceilings. I'll admit, I've had my fun with this playstyle from time to time, and I definitely see Wither Horde pools on the ground pretty much constantly. Still, I'm going to put this one in the D tier. It's a bird? It's a plane. Well, yeah, kind of both at the same time. 
It's a warlock pretending to be a bird, which is pretending to be a fighter jet. Playing as an attack jet against a grounded target is a massive advantage. Get your pen and paper back in hand because it's time for another lesson on how to win in Trials. Let me put this in simple terms. With this playstyle, your opponents will always have to be making guesses about where you're at. Even if your enemy knew exactly which corner you're about to peek, with this aerial playstyle, they'll have to be second guessing your altitude. There is a wealth of knowledge hidden in the ceilings of Destiny maps. Nasty angles, excellent cover from danger, seemingly impossible escape routes, and so on. This playstyle is highly disruptive for your opponents and it can make confident teams second guess every single decision that they make. There's a pretty steep knowledge gap here. You're going to need to learn a lot about map geometry to use this playstyle most effectively, but in this case I think it's very worthwhile. That's why the Aerial Dawnblade snipers with good aim certainly deserve a top spot in the S tier. While we're on the topic of airborne attacks, let's think about the simplest version of in-air weaponry, the Ballistic Missile. These titans are two steps ahead of us as they've already devised a way to delete an entire team in just one Ballistic Slam. The exotic Syntheseps will allow you to instantly nuke any group of at least three players. This way you can punish players who simply just want to play the objective. Alternatively, you can use the Dune Marchers for more area of effect with the trade-off that one random person will survive. However, the bonus movement speed makes it well worth it. The Super, which is a souped up version of the Slam, allows Titans to roleplay like a real missile. At face value, the missile's a free kill against any player, but if you get proficient with the Super, you can kill multiple people mid-flight. This setup is very interesting and it can certainly disturb even very confident teams. Also, the subclass perk Inertia Override provides a damage buff just for sliding over ammo. This allows for a lot of creative playmaking with weapons that can benefit from the damage boost. In total, we'll rank this one B for a Ballistic tier. Remember those old cartoons where someone would throw down a banana peel and the unfortunate victim who stepped on it would go sliding off towards infinity? Well, the reenactment of the banana peel in Destiny 2 is basically this playstyle. The Behemoth Titan using the Cryoclasm aspect will allow you to have a much longer slide. And where's the banana peel? Well, right here. This banana shaped shield provided by the Antaeus Ward will give you an actual immunity shield during the slide. And if anyone tries to shoot at you, their projectiles will come right back at them. A while back during the Hardlight meta, this playstyle used to be absolutely degenerate. The shield would proc on every single slide while granting you free super energy and protecting you from all sides. Now though, it only protects your front and it's only active when you sprint just before sliding. While the strength of this playstyle may have faded a bit, it's still extremely annoying to play against if it's used correctly. The long slide is able to transport you closer to an opponent which can help you secure a kill with a shotgun or a fusion rifle and this opens up a huge amount of aggressive playmaking possibilities. If you can resist the urge to ape at every single engagement and you can tactfully use the Antaeus wards, the long slide can provide an extremely oppressive playstyle. For me, with the buffs coming to the setup in Season 15, this playstyle slides right into the B tier. This playstyle is tailored to roleplay your favorite wizard from the Lord of the Rings. By using either Claws of Ahamkara or Eye of Another World with Shadebinder, you can spam a lot of melee abilities. Bungie didn't seem to be a big fan of this playstyle and it got strongly nerfed multiple times. The slow animation speed combined with the very short freeze duration make it hard to both land and capitalize on a freeze. With the subclass getting even more nerfs next season, the Shadebinder playstyle becomes ever more difficult to pull off. Sorry Gandalf wannabes. It's possible, but unnecessarily hard, and therefore I'm going to rank it in the D tier. Destiny 1 veterans will remember the Blink shotgun playstyle basically dominating high level PvP for the first few years of the game. Back then, hunters could do it too, but now it's restricted only to Void Warlocks. The idea of Blink on any Voidwalker tree sounds pretty potent. Being able to appear at any location in the middle of a gunfight is really awesome. However, the Blink playstyle is made a lot more difficult due to a large number of penalties imposed by blinking. There's a long blink cooldown, your radar gets turned off during blink, and you even get handling penalties on your weapons. All of which makes the tactic of blinking around difficult to use effectively. Those penalties are only slightly mitigated by the exotic helmet Astrocyte Verse, which partially does help. It takes a lot of skill and practice to blink effectively in modern PvP, but it can be done. Honestly, I'm not sure if mastering this skill is really even worth it though. I'll rank blinking in the C tier, but if you're exceptionally good with it, I could see possibly making blink B tier or even A tier. Do you ever wish you had unlimited power? Well, with this playstyle, you will have unlimited power, 
of course, until your next electricity bill appears at the Postmaster. Top Tree Stormcaller along with Arcweb allows you to get some nasty multi-kills with a Storm Grenade. This is particularly disruptive to teams who like to stand around together, like on the first control point in a match. The Super is also very oppressive in the hands of a skilled player, allowing you to close the gap quickly with the teleport ability and easily wipe an entire team. This is a nice kit overall, but slightly outshadowed by the better grenade choices, which is why I'm going to put it in the C tier. If I remember my lessons from engineering school correctly, everything that goes up must come down, and this playstyle absolutely slams down with a massive bang. At the start of Beyond Light, these crafty hunters would combine the Whisper of Fissures, Whisper of Shards, the Shatter Dive aspect, and the Glacier Grenade to get some explosive multi-kills with this combo. It has since been changed multiple times, but the Shatter Dive remains a very oppressive combo. With the uptime you can get on the grenades, many players will do everything at their disposal to avoid a gunfight and instead try to end you and your teammates with this grenade. If you're caught off guard, there's a high chance that you'll get shattered by this combo. It's extremely effective. High skilled players can try to bait out the Shatter Dive without getting exploded in the process, and although it's still fairly generous, it doesn't have quite the killing power of the first versions of this combo. So I'll rank the Shatter Dive Dunkers in the B tier. It's time for lesson number 3 on how to win trials. But first, where's that floating Dawnblade we were just talking about? Ah, there he is. And you got killed again. Wait, what? How? Oh right, Whisper of Rhyme. For the past season, this aspect has allowed players to survive even a high impact sniper headshot. Each shard gathered increases the amount of overshield which can make a titan using this build incredibly tanky. The titan exotic Heart of Inmost Light synergizes beautifully with this setup. This is because whenever you use an ability, it will massively boost the cooldowns of the other two. The behemoth subclass itself also has many fragments and aspects which will help get your abilities back even faster, like Whisper of Shards or the Tectonic Harvest. If you run this as a team, you'll be able to have a literal avalanche of stasis crystals at your disposal, along with an overshield and a damage reduction buff. In its current form, the overshield disables precision damage, making players running this build very difficult to kill. But according to the latest This Week at Bungie update, the precision damage removal is getting fixed in Season 15. But you'll still have roughly 360 health while your opponents will typically have only around 200 at max, so you'll probably still be quite strong. This playstyle gives your team a crazy advantage which is incredibly difficult to play against. I'll rank this one in the S tier for now with a note to evaluate during Season 15 as the meta gets a little bit more established. Whoa, is that an AC-130 gunship overhead? Oh no, it's just a silly titan pretending to be an airplane. These titans love to take the fight to the air by donning the Lion Rampant exotic boots and the sweet sweet business machine gun. This hilarious combo means that the titan can hang out gliding in the air seemingly all day long while firing a hail of bullets towards the enemy. If you want to truly roleplay this fantasy, you can even equip a special ammo grenade launcher and a heavy rocket launcher of choice to bring some extra firepower. Although it's full of laughs, this playstyle isn't exactly effective so I'm going to have to put it in the F tier. However, another alternative here to the sweet business is the Dead Man's Tail Exotic Scout Rifle. This will ramp up the bullet caliber and hit targets for a lot more damage. This playstyle is actually much more effective and I've even used it to go flawless in trials with some friends. Hmm, a one-shot ability. Interesting, but if you land one, you can't do it again until your melee charge comes back. These crafty titans have figured out a workaround though. Simply equip the insurmountable Skullfort helmet, and every time you land a shoulder charge kill with the Striker Titan, you get it right back so you can do it all over again along with health regeneration. Shoulder charges have pretty much the same issue as shotgun apes. They're very effective against lower skilled opponents, but become much more difficult to pull off when you play against people who really know what they're doing. The shoulder charge animation itself has some pretty funky hit detection issues, and it requires a running start which can limit how useful this tactic really is. We're putting this F tier. F for fun, not really for effective. There's one specific move that you'll see almost any top player perform when it's possible with their subclass, the Wombo Combo. In Destiny 1, this was essentially popularized on the Night Stalker class, but in Destiny 2, we have a few different ways to pull it off. On the Night Stalker, you can throw your smoke, then the grenade. On Gunslinger, you can throw your knife, then the grenade. On Middle Stormcaller, you can throw your ball of lightning, then the grenade. And even titans can get in on the fun with the middle tree hammers by throwing a hammer and then a grenade. The Wamo combo is not so much of a playstyle, but more of an incredibly effective tactic when used at the right time. 
Some setups even allow you to use this combo quite frequently, like my recent Hunter build with the young Ahamkara Spine, which I'll link in the description. For the Wombo combo itself, we're going to put this one in the C tier. You know in youth contact sports where they try to make you wear a helmet so you don't injure your brain? Well, I think Shax is making the hunters wear helmets in PvP for the same reason. How many times have you seen one of them wearing stompies and flying through the map bashing their skull against the ceiling as fast as possible just to pick up some extra speed? These guys don't understand the long-term ramifications of this playstyle. Surely they're going to suffer some cognitive issues later in life. But for now, speed is all that matters and they will get to the next shock and kill before you do, no matter the cost. These hunters are speeding into the A tier. What's the worst part of engaging in a 1v1 against a hunter? They dodge the second they start to lose the fight. What's even worse than that? When they get a huge chunk of health back every time they dodge. These Wormhusk crown abusing hunters refuse to ever give you a fair fight. The second there's a chance that they're about to lose the duel, they are out of there with half of their health back. It was actually worse once upon a time. This was back in Season 3 when they actually started recovering their full health back on a dodge. This combined with the bottom tree arc strider was everywhere in the competitive playlist. These days though, the worm husk isn't quite as popular, but losing a fight just because you see their health bar jump right up before you deliver the final blow is just as annoying as ever. We're going to put this one B tier, mostly because that means you're not running stompies. For the next tactic, I needed to bring in the resident expert on the subject. Hey friends, at request of Patty, a fellow cake brethren, I'm talking to you about the snipe lion combo, which as the name implies, combines the snipe rifle with the meme of a weapon, the fighting lion. Initially, the Destiny community thought of this weapon as a joke because it did not one-shot kill, but that was never the point of the weapon. The lion's purpose was as a primer or a cleanup tool. This never changed, even in Forsaken when the Special Weapon Nation attacked and brought with it the power of the sniper rifle, which could one-shot kill at any distance, it made for an even more synergistic pairing with Fighting Lion, allowing for chip damage from the lion with cleanup from the snipe, and vice versa. The combo is really explosive and allows for big plays to be made under pressure where you have to hit headshots with the sniper and direct impact shots with the lion. But in team scenarios, the fighting lion is used more like a laser designator saying, hey, this is the fight that someone is going to be weakened, maybe you should go clean that up. Or if you see an enemy Icarus dashing out of a fight, you can kind of do that in-head calculation and try to bounce the lion off the wall to catch them. Ultimately, when I'm on point with my aim, the snipe lion combo makes me feel like I'm in two places at once, and for that reason, I think this is S tier. I asked the viewers at home, how is this not S tier? Sorry, Cake Bro. Unfortunately, we do have some very strong S tier playstyles, but it's still a scary good combo in your hands. So I'm going to make this another tier above, the Kami tier. As you can probably guess, this video was a crazy amount of work to put together, so if you did enjoy it, I'd really appreciate it if you'd let me know by subscribing and also giving it a like. If you want to see more tier lists, check out my recent video where I ranked every single auto rifle in PvP. It's the video on the top right of your screen and also linked in the description.